Welcome to Collab Conversations with the American Diabetes Association and Beyond Type 1. My name is Ginger Vieira, and with us today is Dr. Nuha El Saeed, who is the Vice President of Healthcare Improvement at the ADA. And today we're going to talk about diabetes remission, which has been a controversial and kind of confusing term until recently. Thank you for having me. It is, that is a true statement. That is a true statement. <laughs> Can you tell me about, there was a recently a really big effort to clarify what it means to be in diabetes remission. Yeah, so a very smart group of people have met, you know, uh, from some representatives of ADA, Endocrine Society, EESD, which is the European Association for the Study of Diabetes. Um, and, you know, they got their minds together to define for us uh, what diabetes remission means. There has been a lot of use of many, many words. Um, some, you know, some people want to use the word reversal, but then when you use reversal, you know, is that does this really, you know, give us the true nature of what happened in, in people with diabetes? And some people thought, you know, it's a cure, but did we really cure diabetes? Hmm. So they they needed to come up with a term that made clinical sense, uh, that is, you know, closer to reality and closer to what actually happens in our bodies. And remission does a really good job of conveying similar in cancer it means you don't have cancer right now, but it could come back so, and versus cure implies you're never going to deal with this again. Absolutely. Because the word cure was, was tricky because some people, for example, had surgery, you know, bariatric surgery to, to lose weight, you know, they would say cure, but, you know, we've seen in some studies that not everyone, you know, has a durable effect, like many, many don't, you know, years down the line. So remission is, I think, a more appropriate term. And, you know, that's why, you know, this group came, you know, gave us this consensus statement. Okay. Uh, yeah. So what qualifies as remission in type 2 diabetes? So as it stands today, it is somebody who would have an A1C under 6.5 okay. uh, for three months and on no medications to control glucose. Okay. So that is how we're defining it. It basically says that you have to have long-term uh, follow-up and you still have to see your, your healthcare team uh, because you know we don't want people to just assume that they're, that's it, we're done. You know, Genetically, if you're at risk, you remain at risk. Uh, so follow-up with the healthcare team is, is really critical. Uh, and also they, you know, they followed up with, we don't know the long-term effects we will study. You know, we okay. still don't have these studies yet. So someone who is maintaining even a, let's say a 5.2 A1C, but they're doing it with medication is not in diabetes. Does not, they're does managing not their diabetes. That, that would not qualify. That's right. Correct. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure there's so many people with type two who want to be in remission and might be frustrated that they can't get there, can't get off their medications. How do you talk to those patients? So I think in general, we, we like to adopt SMART goals. So you really have to see where are you today and how can we progress in a way that is both meaningful clinically and also something that is reasonable, you know, and something that, you know, we, I mean, we can ask somebody who starts walking to run a marathon. That doesn't, you know, it doesn't make any sense, right? Like, so you work, you work with each individual patient and you see, you know, where they are today and slowly get them to where they need to be. We have had a lot of patients who started off with, you know, multi-dose insulin regimens who have gone on to, you know, lifestyle changes. And I have many who are on nothing. They mm. have been in remission for years. So it can be done, but it just has to be done in a sort of smart way, realistic way. Um, and, you know, just going in and, and expressing that this, this is what I want done next month, it, you know, it doesn't happen. I mean, right. in some candidates, you know, surgery can can have uh, fast results, but even that you have to go through a process. Right. That's intense. That's an extensive yeah. process. Yeah. And there are some people who just their body truly needs the support from a medication or insulin to help bring their blood sugars. Absolutely. To and, and it is what, you know, it is a disease and it progresses and different patients are at different levels. Um, and, and we have to work with that and accept that. Right. And it, I think it's really important, important for those people to, to understand that it's, it's okay if you can't achieve remission, can't get your A1C down into that range without support from medications. The most important thing is 
protecting your body from <laughs> high blood sugars? Improvement. I mean, we are looking for improvement. And by no means is this consens consensus, you know, consensus is main aim to say this is what we should all, you know, achieve in our patients. There are patients who will never achieve this. Right. You know, and, and even if they're to. trying with all their might, it's just Absol their body is going to do absolutely. It. It's it's and how much of your pancreas is you know is working and can it support what you need? Right. Do do what yeah. you can to take the best care of you with or without medications as your healthcare team has. Yeah, and we we always have to remember that you know one percent reduction in A one C means a lot of reduction in complications. So do not underestimate that. Right. Going from an eight to a seven you might still be above your goal, but you are still down from an eight and that's a full point. Yeah, you're talking 30 to 40% reduction in some complications. So right. we'll take that, you know, cool. so right. steps towards where we need to be. Yes, cool. Thank you.